Hello, my name is Miss West. You can see me on this first slide teaching with a crown on my head. I'm the head of history at the Hermitage Academy. You can also see our other historians on this slide. Miss Wales is at the bottom, Mr. Archer, Mr. Widdison, Mrs. Bradley and Mr. McLean can be seen setting up for an open evening. I love the fact that our historians have different specialisms and passions, including medieval history, American civil rights and government and politics. Mr. Widdison will speak shortly, but before that, I would like to introduce you to History at the Hermitage. Topics you will cover are split into themes. Challenge, protest and reform includes the Magna Carta, its impact on medieval England, and then up to and including slavery and then the civil rights in the USA. You can see me discussing a medieval source on this slide. You'll study this source in year seven at the Hermitage. We also explore war as a catalyst of change. Here you will study local history, as well as the interwar years, World War II, and the development of the Cold War. You will also study the Holocaust. And as a Holocaust Beacon School in education, we have an ongoing commitment to Holocaust research. This means your lessons are built around the most up-to-date research, which are expertly designed for you. You can see me in this slide standing next to our award for our Holocaust education. We are currently one of only 12 schools in the country who have a quality assurance mark for this work. Not only will you study local, national and world history through different periods of time, but you will develop key historical skills such as writing historical accounts and source analysis. Throughout our curriculum, you are encouraged to make your own judgments on key historical debates. The image on this slide is of myself debating against students. Mr. McLean can be seen chairing the debate and it looks like he has a tough job to do. I mentioned earlier that you would study examples of local history. We hold individual stories and testimonies as one of the most important ways to understand the past. I'd now like to pass you over to Mr. Widdison, who's going to talk more on this subject. Hello, I'm Mr. Widdison. I'm history teacher and head of year 10 here at Hermitage Academy. As Miss West mentioned, individual stories are really important in finding out about the past. In these next few slides, you're going to find out about my family history and hopefully this will inspire you to find out a little bit more about your own. I look forward to hearing your stories. In this photograph, you can see my grandpa, Jack Widdison, and my grandma, Ivy Widdison. Grandpa Jack was born on the 26th of March, 1925. He left school at 14 to go to work with his father and grandfather as an apprentice installing machinery in cotton mills. He joined the Air Training Corps and volunteered to join the RAF in 1943, aged 17. He was sent back to continue his apprenticeship though, as he was in a reserved occupation and therefore was needed for the war effort. This is probably a good thing, as he wanted to be a flight engineer in Bomber Command. The survival rate during the bombing campaign was very low, as over 40% of men died. He was conscripted into the army in 1945 and joined the Royal Engineers where he learnt about bridge building and installing engineering equipment. He didn't uh, serve overseas except for a short period in Northern Ireland and he was discharged from the army in 1948 and went back to work with his family firm. My grandma, Ivy Widdison, was born on 26th of July 1926. She also left school in 1940, age 14. She went straight out to work reading gas meters as the men who used to do it had been called up to fight. She then moved to a factory in Manchester, making Lancaster bombers. At first, she worked in a factory floor, then later in the office doing the accounts. She carried on working as a bookkeeper for the rest of her working life. 
My wife's family history reveals a past fully involved in the conflict of World War II. Her grandpa, pictured in this slide, Henry Smith, served in the forces from 1941 to 1945. He was married for just four days until he went off to war. He served a large amount of time within North Africa in the 8th Army under the leadership of General Montgomery. He even fought in one of the most famous tank battles at El Amin, defeating Bommel's forces. At the end of the war, he returned home to a son he'd never met, and his wife Marion, who recalled that he returned home a different man. The other photograph is a clipping from a newspaper about my wife's other grandpa, Dennis Bradley. In the clipping, you can see that his service sword was given to the Leeds Rifle Museum. He served as a captain in the Royal Tank Regiment, and Captain Bradley was captured in 1942 at the Battle of Tobruk. However, he escaped prisoner war camp in the Apennines in Italy and evaded being captured. This was through the kindness of strangers with families sheltering him from capture until the end of World War II. After the war ended, he even managed to reconnect with a family that protected him during the war, and as you can imagine, it was an emotional reunion. Before the war, he was a promising rugby player, representing the Barbarians in tip to play for England. However, due to the conflict, his career was over. Hopefully, you've enjoyed hearing about my family history, and I look forward to hearing about your family's history when you join us here at Hermitage Academy. I'll leave you this final quote by Dr. Martin Luther King. We are not makers of history, we are made by history. <laughs>